And good afternoon, everyone. Um, my presentation is going to be a preview of the up and coming Windows update that they've called the Creators Update. And I'm using, um, I'm a member of the Insiders um, program for Windows 10. And so I get weekly updates of the future of the new software. So what you'll be seeing today is what is referred to as Bill 15031. It was released on February 8th of 2017. And uh, it has what is currently up to date to moving forward to the Supposedly, they're talking about having a release um, sometime in March. But anyway, the creator's update will be the next free update to Windows 10. It follows the anniversary release, which was version 1607 that was released in July 2016. The creator's update is planned for early 2017. I've heard um, People mention um, April, I've heard, also heard March, but supposedly it will be known as version 1703, which, uh, as someone pointed out, uh, using their current uh, version um, policy, it sort of seems like it will be more like March. Now, the thing that you have to remember is that you have to be running Windows 10 Anniversary Update, which is a 1607. So you need to go out and check, and I'll show you how to do that, that you are running the latest version of Windows. So like I said earlier, participants who've joined the Microsoft Insider Program gets free view bills of Microsoft Windows. Um, and what we're seeing today is the latest um, bill for the soon to be released version. And I'll show you how to become a member of the Microsoft Insider program at the, uh, as we uh, wrap up our session. And John, uh, we'll try to maybe get um, 10 minutes perhaps um, uh, for questions and answers if that's possible. I don't know how many we'll have, but we'll try to answer as many as, um, as uh, time allows. Okay, I'll watch the clock for you. All right. Thank you, sir. So one of the things that um, has always been a problem, what was, was a big problem uh, when the release of uh, Windows 10 was uh, the two big controversies. One was, of course, everybody complained about the heavy-handed, uh, as someone referred to, downright nasty forced upgrade push. And then, of course, there was uh, deep-seated privacy concerns. So Microsoft's aggressive migration ended when the free upgrade offer expired, and uh, the Windows 10 Creators Update addresses the privacy issues. So you're, what you do, remember that when we get a major update like we're going to be receiving, it's a completely reinstall of the Windows program. So you'll go through all the uh, set up procedures uh, as uh, you would if you were just installing it, a fresh copy of Windows. And if you recall, one of the screens that you were presented as you went through the installation, you had a choice of what was called Express, um, the Express upgrade or the custom. And most people took the Express which was later criticized because it left you uh, with no choices of what you wanted to uh, have Microsoft uh, know about you. And so that was a major concern. And then of course, going through the custom update was even more hair raising because it was difficult to navigate through the screens because you always did not know uh, the answers or understood the answers to the of what you were supposed to answer to those questions. So they've tried to um, make this a little more uh, simple by presenting you with this screen, which you'll see, and you'll have the option of uh, turning off or on 
uh, different uh, functions and they're quite easily to understand like location, speaker recognition as uh, so forth. And they also tell you what will happen if you do turn it off. Uh, there is one can't be about this is that still is a, a, a either or situation. So you either are going to have a minimal access, Microsoft will have a minimal um, access to your PC or will have full access. And there's no intermediate um, or intermediary option. But uh, this is the screen that you see. And what you'll do is just switch the toggles on or off and then do the accept. So um, I'm going to be um, demonstrating most of the things that uh, I can. It's not um, everything. There's a slew of new uh, updates. But here's a short sum summary of what you'll see. Uh, one is there's going to be updates to Microsoft Edge, uh, particularly with regards to tab management. Um, you can now place the tiles on the start menu into folders, and I'll demonstrate that. Um, there's also some scaling, snipping, and sharing improvements. Um, Cortana will now um, suggest um, results as you type, so I'll show you how, how that works. There's a lot of new controls and settings, I'll show that. Uh, you now have the option to use the blue light uh, setting uh, in when the, the evening, uh, in, in the evening, a lot of people like to have a softer view of their uh, display, and so there's a control now to turn that on and off. Um, there's an on-demand Windows Refresh and Windows Defender. Plus, there's also the Windows Defender Center, which I'll show that. Uh, there's some a lot of upgrades in the narrator for people that use that. And, of course, as I said earlier, there's um, some upgrades to um, Microsoft Edge, particularly um, being able to read e-books and a few other things. So we'll um, look at that. So um, let's just get to it. I'm going to share my screen, if I can do that, uh, uh, without having a major catastrophe here. So I'll just minimize that, minimize that. OK, can everyone see my screen, I hope? John? Okay. Yeah, we're seeing it. Excellent. And if you're wondering about the um, desktop background, that's provided by Bing. I use the Bing desktop, which you can download. And I, every um, day or sometime twice a day, I get a beautiful um, background. As you see, I um, belong to the school that I don't like to have all these icons on my desktop. And because uh, I use the uh, start menu exclusively. And of course, if I do have to get to, uh, if I save something to the desktop and I want to get to it, I quite simply just go to my uh, file manager and then click on desktop. And all the things that I have on my desktop shows here. And I can change the view to, um, to a detail like this. But this is all the things that's on the desktop. So you can see I would have a pretty cluttered desktop if I showed all those icons. So that's kind of the reason why I uh, elect to um, hide those. And what I've done is just right click here and go to the View tab and um, uncheck the show desktop icons. If I click that, I'm going to get that. But I prefer not to, so I go to view here and just check that, and I have a nice clean desktop. So I can enjoy the, the wonderful scene. Uh, the Bing desktop, uh, one thing, gives you um, a little um, 
indicator of what this is. That's a beach near uh, Tofino, which I'm not sure if I know where Tofino is, but nevertheless, it's a very nice picture. Um, that's just a little extra that's not part of Windows 10. All right. So, um, to begin with, as you notice Cortana here, the taskbar has taken on a, a, a brighter appearance. And um, so it's, it's a brighter than what it was before. But when you use it to search, you can go in and just begin typing the words and it will begin, begin to suggest what you're typing. So if I'm looking for cats, I could just type cat or begin to type cat and you notice I'll get everything that pertains to cats showing almost immediately. Um, so, um, and then I just click on the best match and I'm there. Um, everything to know about cats. Or if I wanted to, um, let's do a uh, longer word, let's say uh, computer technology. So you can see that it begins to suggest um, that um, start searching immediately, just like it um, as um, Windows did, I guess, in, in Windows 8, it had something very similar to that. So that's that's new, which is very welcome. Also, the uh, shortcut for um, the um, to get to the Cortana has been changed from um, to W plus C, so I can just do my W plus C and it comes up. Rather than the old one was Windows, Shift C. Um, so um, that's something to look for. Now, for those that use Cortano for um, doing monthly reminders, um, you can go here and click on reminders and see, like, I have some things here that I've already set up. And it's just a matter of um, clicking uh, there and enter what you want it to be reminded about. Um, very easy to set up. I just type in um, BTC, and the time would be. Um, Uh, you can like do it in 30 minutes, an hour, or tomorrow, or then select other time, which then allows you to put in a uh, future date. But um, very easy to do, and then just click remind. Now, one of the things you also will notice on the taskbar, besides the, the new uh, lighter colored Cortana, is that by default, the Windows Mail app will be attached to the taskbar now. Of course, you can always unattach it by just right clicking and unpinning it from the taskbar. But when you first install um, uh, Windows 10 Creators Update, you'll find that you'll have the Windows Mail icon, you have Edge, you have um, the store, and you have um, the file manager. So those are the four icons that will be um, installed automatically on your taskbar. If you want to change those, like I said before, it's just right click and then just unpin them from the taskbar. So if we go now to settings, and that is just clicking on the gear in your uh, start menu, you'll find the Windows settings. Now Windows settings is, um, at some point will be the replacement for the old control panel. 
And um, if you're still wed to the control panel, remember you can still get to it by just typing in control panel and clicking on that. And the old control panel, as you remember it, is still there. <laughs> but I suggest that you um, try using the window settings first uh, to do um, whatever you want to do. If you want to change the date and time or you want to uh, change the resolution of your printer, go here to the um, um, window settings and uh, try using um, it to do those things that you normally would do in your um, with the control panel. And of course, you get if you get really frustrated and you find that um, you can't uh, figure out where anything is, then you can uh, then uh, go to the old control panel. But as you can see, that um, rather than having, I guess I closed it up. It really very much cores, uh, corresponds to the old category. So here is the new window settings, and here's the control panel in categories. And if you notice, um, the layout or the, some of the titles are very close to what it was in um, the control panel. Some of the terms are different, like programs have been changed now to apps, but by and large, it's basically the same thing. So if you use this layout, then you will have uh, very much trouble using this one. Uh, some of the new things that you'll see, of course, is now uh, from Windows um, 10, um, the anniversary update is that this is a new icon, apps, and you'll see this gaming uh, one, which we'll discuss a, a little bit. But uh, those are some of the changes on this main screen. And of course, if you click into the, the uh, to get a more um, in-depth look at some of the things, you'll find that some of these have been changed. First of all, is that remember I said something about the nightlight? Well, this is where you make that change and you have an hour. It's off in this case until 6.08 uh, p.m. So at that time, my screen will then take a, um, a um, softer um, hue. It won't be as bright as it is now, which is supposed to be easier on your eyes. And you can uh, make the settings here what the color temperature you want. And then, of course, schedule it um, uh, at Pacific hours from sunset to sunrise. Um, or you can set the hours. Uh, um, to uh, this right here is automatic with the computer based on the, the system time. This one right here is hours which you set that's custom to you. And then um, of course you can um, set this temperature uh, how you want it. This is in the default setting. I haven't changed it, but you have a slider that you can move to make it lighter or darker. Of course, this is where you can scale the size of your fonts. You can do the um, resolution, and you can select whether uh, if you have multiple displays, uh, and which I do. I have my uh, the, there's a television that's in this room that has an HDMI connector, so I sometimes project uh, my screen onto that TV. It's a um, so I have it set for duplicate displays, but I. Can still I can extend this screen to that monitor, or I can show only on um, display one or display two. Also, remember that anytime you see a hyperlink, or I'm sorry, let's, let's say this differently. Anytime that you see a a, a text in a different color, that means that it's actually a link. So if you scroll your uh, mouse over there, over it, it'll turn into a hand and it will have additional information. 
So don't overlook that point. Like in this case, custom scaling. Um, I can uh, set that uh, between 100 to 500, which in this case is telling me it's not recommended. Um, and then if I have a question about that, I can go over here now. This is not uh, in the current version of Windows, but it will be in the future one, where I can click on Get Help. Well, that didn't work. But what, well, what this actually does is that it takes you to a chat where you can uh, put in your problem, and someone on the other end will um, try to um, or attempt to help you. It's, uh, it's a live chat. So um, it was working yesterday, so I'm not sure why it's not working today. Um, so um, as we go down the list, notification and actions. As you're familiar with uh, Windows um, 10, it has what's referred to the um, Action Center, which is uh, this laundry list of different notifications that you will receive uh, uh, within a given hour. Now you control those through the notification settings here. So if there are things that um, you don't want to get in the Action Center, then um, you can um, turn those on or off. So it gives you a list of all the applications on your PC that sends notifications out. Um, I have, for some reason, most of mine on, and I believe that when you install that program or when you first um, uh, install Windows, these are going to be turned on. So you probably will need to go in. I shouldn't say probably. You'll need to go in and switch them off if you don't want them. But um, there's quite a, every um, application that you have on your computer that um, is capable of sending a message to you will be in this list. Over here in Power and Sleep, it's the same um, information that you've done, except uh, it's in a more um, an easily read format, like um, when your PC is plugged in, um, it tells how many minutes that you would like the uh, screen to remain on. It's uh, more practical for laptops than it is for um, uh, particularly, but a lot of people uh, want their screens to go to sleep uh, after a certain uh, time as an energy savings but at, with flat screen monitors it's not really necessary to um, uh, that's not it's not critical as it was before um, then of course you want your PC to go to sleep you have that option as well here in this other list and again um, if you click on over here where it says related power settings these used to be down at the bottom of a, of a lot of these screens. They've moved them to the side, which makes it really uh, helpful. And you click that, you get probably the old power saving options. And in your current Windows, 8, uh, Windows 10, you have the same capability, except you'll want to look for it down below um, in this area here. But in Windows, uh, the new version, it'll be here to the side. And again, of course, here is uh, the live chat, which is just not working today. It had been working. Um, so um, moving on, this will be new. This shows you all your um, um, storage. On your uh, that you have installed your um, all your disk drives, but the thing that's really new is the storage sense. Now, here Windows can automatically free up space by getting rid of files you don't need, like temporary files and and content in your recycle bin. And of course, it's a toggle that you turn on or off. 
and then there's an explanation of how they're going to go about freeing up space. So you can change that. We have to clean up zero bytes of disk space this past month. I will tell you that'll probably increment uh, as it uh, each for the month. And if you wanted to delete all the temporary files that your apps are not using, you turn that on. If you want to uh, delete files that's been in the recycle bin for over 30 days, you turn this on. Um, these are be turned off by default, so you have to go in and physically uh, uh, do that. Um, and if you want to, you can um, do a clean now by clicking on this button. So that's brand new. Uh, that'll be coming with Windows uh, 10 anniversary update. Uh, you also can, um, it has more storage settings here, change where the new content is saved, and then you can just tell it where you want uh, your uh, new documents, music, uh, photos. So if you have like an external drive, then you can have those saved there without um, having to do anything other than just do the normal save, and that's where they will be saved. So um, that's my external backup drive, but I don't save anything to it, but it does show here. So the icons um, indicate, this is apps, new documents, new music, photos and videos. Uh, music uh, and TV shows and um, what they call offline maps. Unfortunately, this would be neat if um, the photos and videos would let you save those automatically to OneDrive, but you don't have that choice. Um, if you're running a tablet, um, you can um, have this set, but also if you are one that uh, tends to like the old Windows 8 view, then you could have this um, changed to um, use the desktop mode or the tablet mode. If you're on a tablet, you can have the tablet use the desktop mode. If you're on a desktop, you can have it use the tablet mode. So when the tablet mode is invoked, what happens is that the start menu becomes full screen, like it did, like it was in Windows 8. So that's just an option. Um, it's never. Um, I thought when I first, um, I was really devastated when they changed the the layout from uh, having the, the tiles full screen to the start menu. I thought that I would. Um, continue using it, uh, Windows uh, 10 in that mode. But for some reason, after I started using the Start menu, I really prefer um, using this now than I did before. So, um, multitasking, uh, arrange Windows automatically by dragging them to either sides of the corners. Now, a lot of people complain about that. Because when you were working with, um, say if you were working with Windows, I mean with Word, and um, you inadvertently, and you're using when you inadvertently moved it up to the top or side, it automatically um, resize. Well, here, I'm sorry. You can change that behavior by turning these off. So if you are using a window and you swipe it to um, one of these hot corners, it will not change, uh, it will not react to it. And this is where you um, turn that on or off. When I snap a window, show what I can snap next to it, so forth. You can turn all that activity uh, off. If you have a, a device that allows you um, to cast your um, PC to a, another display using what's referred to as mirror cast, then that's um, available to you as well.
Shared experiences allows you to open apps and other devices and send messages between. I have this turned on because I do use a laptop that is synced to my desktop. And I have a, some other musical devices that are also synced. So I want to uh, be able to share or receive um, content between those devices. But you can also make it uh, extend it further than that by saying everyone nearby. So that meant would mean that if um, someone has a Bluetooth device or or anything like that, then this would allow them to be able to see um, uh, your PC if that was turned on. I'm pretty sure that's the right uh, statement, but I have it my devices only, so that uh, whatever is being broadcast uh, with this turned on won't, won't occur. And of course, the last one is about, and that tells you about um, the um, your what version you have on your PC. And see on this one, the edition I'm using is the Insider Preview. It's still version 1607, which is the anniversary, but the bill number is 15031, as I said earlier. Uh, which is um, different in some ways than the uh, bill that is uh, assigned to version 1607. I don't know, I can't remember what it is, but, but I think you understand what I'm saying. And then it tells your processor how much RAM, uh, operating system, et cetera. So uh, that's all there. So if one wants to know or ask a question, how much RAM do you have in your machine or what size, kind of processor? All you need to do is just go to system and then scroll down to about. And um, you get that information. Now, if someone was asked me to do that with the control, the old control panel, I don't think I could find it readily. So I, I just think this is a, the um, settings uh, menu is just so much more intuitive. Uh, some of the other ones here is um, new is personalization. Is that in personalization you can go now to colors and it shows you um, colors that you can change the background and uh, the bars and all this but now what's new is that you can now choose a custom color and uh, choose the colors that you would like it to be. So uh, that wasn't available in the previous versions of Windows 10, but you will be able to do that now. So that, that feature has been added. Um, you also uh, can change the color. This is what's available and was available in the current version of Windows. You can make it light or dark. For people that like the dark theme, it's just a matter of clicking that and it turns black. Um, unless you, uh, and I believe you can do that into the, and into the, with the current version of Windows that you're using. But uh, that's under colors. Um, the lock screen is gonna have a new feature which I have not been able to get it to work. And um, I'm not so sure um, let's see where is it? Oh, I'm in the wrong place. I will talk about that in a few minutes. But the lock screen allows you to um, get certain uh, information on the lock screen without having to open up um, or physically um, touch a, to log into your computer, such as um, if you want Cortana to be able to uh, um, do certain things, you don't have to go and press log into the computer. You can do it uh, just by asking us because the uh, uh, she'll have capabilities of uh, being able to uh, understand what you need without having to log in. Um, themes. Um, 
are still available, except now you get those from the Microsoft Store. So when you click here, they'll take you to the store, and you have all those themes that used to be, um, I think on the other one it says get them from the, um, all, it said online pictures, I believe, or online themes, but now, and there was a separate area, but now they're all in the store. And um, for the most part, they're free. There are some that you have to pay for, but for the, for the most part, they're free. Um, this is how the start um, menu uh, looks, and um, you can choose um, how that is configured. This area here, you also can um, determine which folders appear on start. And when I say that, we're talking about this area right here, as you can see. Now, um, if you look at this, I'll put this over to the side so it won't uh, you'll be able to see. Yeah, well, I'm still like I'll move it a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> if you notice here, I have these icons, which are um, I use frequently, and that's documents, downloads, file explorer, and settings. This right here determines whether or not those show up. So I can turn these all off. And now when I go there, there's nothing there. Uh, so I can pick which ones I want. I like the file explorer, I like settings, I like documents, I like downloads. Uh, I might do pictures. So here now, if you see those all show up. And that's just another quick access to get to those particular folders. So if I hit my pictures folder, then my pictures show up. It's just like uh, rather than having to pin to the taskbar or some other place, you have a quick access here. And that's by using um, choose, which, choose which folders appear on start. Um, here is the button that will allow you to use the start menu full screen. So if I turn that on and click here, you see it looks like Windows 10. So that's particularly handy for people that have a desktop that has a, a touch screen monitor. They want to use these, or of course you can still use the mouse. But it does the, um, um, it looks very much like Windows 8. So that's a matter of just um, turning, toggling this start full screen on. And then my taskbar, I have the settings for that where I can lock it. Um, I can automatically hide the taskbar and uh, taskbar in desktop mode, which is the way uh, I'm doing here. So it's not always showing. Um, and a few other things too. This is the peak preview, which is that area right here. When you would click, it makes the desktop go, um, it hides the desktop completely by moving the mouse to the corner. That is um, turned on or off here. You use the peak to preview the desktop when you move your mouse to show a uh, desktop button to the end of the taskbar, which is right here. Right here in the corner. Okay. Let's see here. Um, the apps menu used to be over as part of system. They've, com they've broken it out. It's no longer one of the uh, menu choices here. It now has its own um, application. So um, 
this shows all the um, programs or apps that you have installed, the date that they were installed, as well as the size. Mm -hmm. And you can right click on these, I mean, I'm sorry, double click on these, whoops, cancel. Um, and you'll get uh, the options to modify or uninstall. So you can uninstall these from here. Sometimes it will take you to the, um, depends on the um, application, it will take you to the uninstall menu, but for the most part, they will just uninstall here. So um, it's just a matter of uh, just double clicking on those and those show up. And this is everything that you have installed on your computer. Also, this allows you to change the default. So say for instance, if you want to use as your browser some other um, a Chrome or uh, Firefox, you can do it here. You double click and it gives you the option to use this as the default. And I so I can I can set Firefox or Chrome as my default browser. Uh, if I want to use the uh, a different photo viewer, like oops, I can use choose from any one of these. Like a lot of people uh, like the photo gallery, so I can change it to photo gallery rather than the app photos. Bill, I want to remind you of something before you run out of time. Uh, folders on the start menu. Yes, going to do that. What's how, how are we doing for time? Oh, you got five, six, seven minutes. Okay, I'm about to get there. All right, um, but. Um, so you still have accounts. That's where you um, have all your mail and um, sign-in options. And one of the sign-in options is what I wanted to show you, is that in the future, you're gonna be able to do something that's called dynamic lock. And what that does is that it pairs with your smartphone and it will tell Windows where you are at your PC or away and it will automatically uh, lock the device. Uh, currently, it's not working, but um, that's something to look for if you're one to that have multiple computers in a room. It's, it's going to be more appropriate for businesses, but you also might want to use it for your home. But it's just you pair it uh, with your phone, and so your phone uh, knows when you are. Uh, when you walk away with your phone, it'll know that you're away from your computer, and so it will uh, then lock the screen. All right, uh, let's see here. Gaming, we won't go into that because this is for people that are into games, and there's gonna be all kinds of um, features to be able to, to uh, record and broadcast, and even have a special game mode which uh, enhances the performance of the PC. So that's something that will be part of the update. Um, and in update security, the big thing here, besides a new icon, will be a Windows Defender. Now you notice that when I clicked on that, it brings the old one up, but this is the way Windows Defender will look once they get it integrated into that app. It'll be called the Windows Defender Security Center, and it will look like this. And it follows the, the um, same design as other Windows apps, and it'll tell you um, your virus and uh, your scan history, uh, what your protection settings are, and your updates, and all that good stuff. Um, It'll tell you, give you a health report. Now, one of the new things, too, is that it has this fresh start, which you'll be able to um, get an up-to-date version, uh, uh, up-to-date installation of Windows. So if you think your uh, PC is running uh, poorly, you can use this fresh start. It will keep your personal files and some of your Windows settings 
and remove some of the apps. So you might have to reinstall those, but for the most part, you'll be getting a fresh copy of Windows. So that will be uh, something uh, that will be available in this new uh, Defender Security Center. Uh, tells you about your firewall network protection. Also, you'll be able to do your family options for uh, parental controls and uh, be able to see um, who's using what, what devices are being used. I see it's saying those devices are currently being used in this household. Okay. Some of the enhancements to Edge is um, here. I'll put this down so it's not so big. Is that one of the things that when you have um, multiple tabs up, add a new tab. Is that um, you'll be able to stack these. Um, in various ways. Let's see if I can get that to work. All right, if I click on here, it's going to show me the uh, ones that I have uh, have available, and I can restore all of these. Also, there's a little shiver in now. When I click on this, it shows you um, a preview of the tabs that I have opened and that's that little guy right there but this stacking thing is kind of interesting um, so I can go in and um, it's what it's called tabs I've set aside and I can go back and restore these uh, at any time so um, that's kind of what's happening with edge And one of the things that um, that's really exciting is the fact that now on the start menu, you can um, put your tiles into folders. And to do that, you just drag them on top of one another. Now you see I have both Windows and Excel in a tab. And I can also put uh, any ones that I want in there. Now I have Word, Excel, and Publisher, as you notice. So um, that's going to save a lot of space. And when I get ready to go to them, I just need to click on them. It drops down, and then I choose the one I want to use. Um, to get them back out of the folder, it's just I just need to drag them down below the line. Oops, I dragged the whole thing down, I'm sorry. It takes a little bit of practice. But now I have them back out of the folder and I can just put them back to where I want them. So that's a really a, um, a nice feature if you don't want to have a lot of um, uh, clutter on your start menu, you can now consolidate the tiles into um, one uh, one tile. And it takes a little bit of practice, but uh, you'll get the hang of it. It's kind of like anything else um, that's, um, that's new. And one thing I did forget, uh, which I'll do that right now, is the fact that Edge, now, uh, you can now uh, purchase um, ebooks from the from the from the library from the store, and um, what happens is that here um, this is my favorites. 
this is uh, my reading list, and this is my books. And so I purchased this book from the store. It's, um, it's not my quite taste in reading, but it was cheap, and I wanted to have something to demonstrate. So when I click this, the uh, book now is going to uh, be a, uh, I can now read it in uh, with Edge. So I just, uh, um, I can do all kinds of things like make it to zoom in or out. Um, um, I can change the font size. Let me see if I can get to some text here. And if I want to change the text, I can do that. But I can also have it even read to me by hitting the read aloud. It's possible that incredible to imagine some wordless humans may not have read my previous works of astonishing magnificence to wit dark lord the teenage years dark lord a fiend in need and dark lord eternal detention yes that's right eternal detention if you are one of those wordless humans here is a summary of previous events like i Once said it was a not necessary. dark lord like I said, it's not necessarily my uh, type of book, but um, nevertheless, it was there. Now, if I'm going to have it read to me, I can choose on the voice settings. I can choose who I, with the speed I want it read. I can also change who I want it to uh, be read by. So these are different voices that you can choose. So um, that's um, uh, something that's uh, new and. What happens is that um, if you want to uh, get books, you just click on here and uh, you can then buy them from the store. Shop for books, click there, and it takes you to the store, and then you have all of these choices. Um, most of them will, I, I have not been able to find any free ones. So I, I even searched for them, but uh, there's one right there that was $1.99. I think I paid more than that for the one I purchased. All right. Uh, I think, oh, I was going to tell you for people that might want to be interested in being a part of the Windows Insider program, it's uh, really simple to, um, to sign up for that is go to settings again and and the um, on the home uh, on the system screen well I'm sorry I was where I was go down to update and uh, security and down at the bottom you it'll say the Windows Insider program click there and here you can sign up um, in your case, it'll say Start Insider Preview Builds. And you click that, and um, that gets you set up. It takes probably about 24 hours for this all to get synced up. And then you can choose which um, ring you want to be in. And in this case, I'm in the fast, but there's a slower ring where you can sign up as well. You won't get as many updates as you do with the fast ring. The fast ring spits them out about once a week. And um, the slow rain is probably maybe once every two weeks or maybe once a month. Not really sure about that. Um, I haven't found any real issues for what I do because uh, this is on my, um, my desktop machine. I do have a laptop, which I use primarily. I don't use the desktop uh, as frequently. But I do use it just to uh, see what the latest um, developments are in the uh, the Windows Insider program, but I haven't found anything that's really crashed my computer. So, um, um, not saying that it's totally um, 
Now that that's a totally unavoidable situation because it could happen. But if you want to uh, be on the experimental side, then uh, sign up for it. You can do it at any time. So uh, that's something to think about. Okay, John, I think that kind of ends uh, my presentation as far as I have it um, developed. So are there questions that we have? I think what we'll do is we'll send you the questions and then uh, you can answer because there are a few of them out there, but uh, it's already four o'clock and so oh. we gave everybody a, a bonus uh, 15 almost uh, minutes. I want to thank you. Uh, there's quite a lot coming out and as you have mentioned uh, in on your previous talks that Windows 10 is never done and it will always be changing. Uh, and so we'll get this update maybe next month and then I think there's another update later in the year so uh, I think the time frame they'll probably be bringing them out every six months okay um, don't ever expect to see a Windows 11 I don't think that's gonna happen <laughs> Windows forever Windows forever Okay. Uh, well, thank you so much. Ab, um, thank you. Uh, it was quite a lot. Uh, you know, just about everybody kept kept on w with you. Uh, but we will uh, send those. If you have uh, any questions, uh, we'll leave the chat box open for a few more minutes and you